Hi, Scissoring here, and welcome to another episode of Path of Exile University. This is going to be Mapping 101, so uh, this is a big part of the Path of Exile endgame, and uh, hopefully be able to give you some tips on uh, how to do it the best way. So here we have a picture of the endgame mapping system, and uh, it might look slightly different than the yours. This obviously has uh, loads of something called watchstones in, which we'll get to later. But uh, this is the Path of Exile endgame mapping system. And um, this is basically, some of them are like similar to things you've done in the campaign. But a good way of thinking of this is the Atlas of Worlds is a, a map of maps. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, just uh, loads, loads of like different zones. You can see there's some lines between. And we're going to pull this apart and explain everything for you. Um, so all maps. Um, and, and maps are sort of like, um, they're like, uh, an item in game of like, um, like an area or a land you can go to and you can kill all the monsters there. You can roll it, uh, and they are like increasing in difficulty, the, the higher in number you get. So like the, the earliest would be tier one map, the highest would be tier 16 map. But, uh, either way, this is like the core end game of Path of Exile. So they do belong to a region and they're connected to other maps with dotted lines. So you can see these like ant-like trails between maps here. Um, and some maps will have a, a unique variant. So for example, um, we have here an atoll map and there is a unique atoll map. So you can see that they're like connected like that. The connection there doesn't actually matter for the unique maps, but uh, unique maps are just like very, very special maps that are kind of always the same. And some of them are very rewarding. Um, and uh, yeah, the atlas does give you a lot of information. Like some maps will be highlighted, and some maps will not be. Um, so if it appears highlighted on your atlas, that's sort of the maps you can drop. And we're gonna there's a lot of different drop rules. So this is a slightly more complicated lesson, obviously, but uh, kind of has to be. And uh, the atlas is divided into eight named regions. You have Hayward Hamlet, Clannad Cairns, New Vestir. Valdos Rest, Lyra Thane, Lex Proxima, Turnsend, and Lexioris. Uh, they're the eight regions. Uh, and then we have four inner regions and four outer regions. And uh, we have a clean atlas here ready to show. And you can see that the, the inner regions, if we hover over some of the maps here, they're from like tier one to four. Uh, whereas the outer regions are tier three to five. So the inner regions are slightly lower level than the outer regions. Uh, let's see. Right. And uh, so about the connection, that's a, that is called either a connected or an adjacent map. Um, and that is actually very important for the drop purposes, which we're going to be explaining. <clears throat> so maps start at level 68, and they can start dropping as early as... Actually, I think you can very rarely get them in Act 7. But once you start going through Act 8 onwards, uh, you do start getting uh, these maps drop. And um, then you have like, it goes all the way up to level 83 and uh, not part of this lesson, but you can go all the way up to 86 maps with some uh, special stuff in the end game. And uh, if you find like that, you know, all of the stuff you're currently listening to, there is going to be a mapping 202 after this session. Um, so it's like, it's one level per tier. So... Generally, the way we uh, we talk about maps is, you know, this would be a white map, this would be a red map, and uh, the tier 6 to 10 maps, they're called yellow maps. Not to be confused, for obviously we see like yellow items for uh, for rare items, but a yellow map doesn't mean a rare map. It's, uh, it's about the tier. So if you're doing white maps, that doesn't mean that you're just not rolling your maps. Um... And then there are some maps as well. Obviously, this is the unique atoll map I was talking about. And uh, here we have a special map called Lair of the Hydra, which we'll get to later. But that is basically like a, an end game boss, not a green map. Um, so here, for example, we have a white map. This isn't what you'd call a yellow map, even though you would think I get how that can be confusing because you call it yellow items when it's rare. Um, so um, whenever you do get into a map, there will be an objective and normally that is uh, or always that is killing the boss and there's there's a few different things you can do so if you do the map 
if you just have a map in your inventory and you just do it completely white and you can open up your either your map tab or a normal session fish out a map but if you do a map like this completely white you are going to unlock the map on your atlas it'll get like colored in however uh it will not get a bonus which is uh these sorry <clears throat> these bonuses down here but if all you want is to be able to in the future drop this map you can do it completely white regardless if it's a red map or a yellow map you don't need to do any advanced completion for it to be droppable so that's an easy rule to remember if you, like all you have to do is clear the map at any level uh and then if we hold alt down on the map you'll see that we have the atlas map that's the one i was just talking about just any completion and then you have two other completions that are more advanced you have the bonus objective which is uh, complete in this case, and then the further most advanced one, awakening objective. Um, so as a as a as a quick like requirements on the white maps to get the bonus completion for those, you just need to um, it it just needs to be blue. So it's very very easy, right? You can roll them very very. Uh, they don't have to be like dangerous, right? And then for the yellow maps, the tier 6 to 10, then uh, if we hold um, there, you can see they're all completed as well. And here on, on a yellow map, that means that the, uh, the bonus will be uh, when you do it rare. So here it can no longer be blue. And if you do a blue one, it'll still unlock, like I said before, but uh, it, won't, uh, it won't give you the bonus on the yellow maps. And then on red maps, uh, it is going to need to be uh, rare and corrupted. And sometimes when we are corrupting a map with a Val Orb, it can, it can become really, really dangerous. It could roll mods that you can't do in your character. Maybe you're playing a Frostbolt character um, and you get Elemental Reflect on the map. And um, that could be bad. It could also say you really need a Carcass map. You only have one. Uh, you Val it and it turns into a Tier 12 map. So, yeah. And and again, like the bonus is something you only need to unlock once as well. And the awakening objective we're going to cover later. So, how do we drop maps and how does that work? So, a really, really easy rule of thumb is that maps need to be unlocked or colored in on the atlas to drop at all. Um unless they are adjacent. So that's like the two rules. That means that at the start of an unfilled atlas, if I'm doing a coves, you can see that there's lines between here to moon temple and wharf, right? And and to fields. So these are adjacent maps. So whenever I'm killing monsters in coves, I can then drop those three. Uh, however, I can't go directly from coves to temple because they're not adjacent. However, Whenever a map is unlocked or filled in on the atlas, like if you see my entire atlas is filled in right now, right? I've been playing for a long time. Pretty much everything is filled in. If I'm doing a shrine map, it's tier five. Every other map here can drop because there's currently no other maps higher than tier five. So everything that's filled in can then drop. And that's how um, how it is with it being unlocked and or completed. So uncompleted and connected maps can draw from any other connected map if the level requirements are met. So what are the level requirements and how does that work? So a normal or a white monster in a map can drop maps of the same tier. How does that, what does that mean? So if I am in a tier three map and I'm killing a white monster, that can drop a tier one, two, or a three map. But for no reason ever can a white monster in a tier three map drop a tier four or a tier five map. Magic and rare monsters uh, can drop one tier higher. So if I am in a tier three map, those can drop a tier four. Uh, and that's how we can start building a, a higher level map pool. Um, and then uh, as an incentive to actually kill the boss at the end of the map, the bosses can draw maps of two tiers higher. So if I am then clearing, uh, let's say I'm clearing a mud geyser um, and you do still have to have a tier five unlocked. I'm 90% sure that you can't go like since you don't have a, you would have to have a connection to a tier 5 map which I'm pretty sure there isn't any direct connection to a tier 5 map on the atlas but either way let's say that we have we have shrine unlocked and we have mud geyser then killing the boss in a mud geyser 
can drop a tier of five. So the bosses can drop plus two. Uh, they also have an increased chance. There's some like drop bonuses on bosses that they can like have a higher chance to drop nearby maps. So we have already talked a little bit about the Atlas bonus and how to get it, but what does it do? So if you look in the middle here, uh, completed bonus objective, and this is the one you get by on white maps doing them blue, on yellow maps doing them uh, rare. And what does this do? Does it give us more map drops? No. Um, sometimes you'll see people complaining about, oh, I have like really, really high Atlas bonus, but I'm dropping so few maps. Well, regardless if you have 164 or zero, you drop exactly the same amount of maps. It does not influence the drop rate at all. So what this does is that once you have a hundred completed bonus objective, if you were going to find a level two map, it can become a level three map as long as the drop rules, um, so let's let's give an actual like workable example. I'm clearing a tier three temple, and a tier one map is about to drop from a monster. That is going to be tier two. However, it still follows the basic drop rules. So if I'm in a temple tier three, right, and the game goes, "Ooh, you're dropping a temple," well, seeing as if it's from if it's from a white monster, that can still not bypass the drop levels. Um, so even if it's saying it will be one tier higher. It won't, it won't go above that, right? A tier, a, a normal monster in a tier three can still not drop a tier four. The bonus doesn't bypass that. But this is like still very, very strong whenever you're in higher maps and the game goes like, ooh, say you're doing a tier 16 maps, right? You're clearing the end game and you're about to drop a tier 15 map. That is now going to be a tier 16 map. So you well, basically what the bonus does is that you end up getting a higher map pool and it helps us like build it. But it's still very, very important to get a high Atlas bonus. And then if you have 150%, you have a, it's a guarantee that it's plus one and a 50% chance of plus two. Um, so that's a little bit about the rules and how they drop. So, um, a, a easy rule of thumb, and maybe a lot of the other stuff I've been explaining so far seems really complicated. You can't get a map to drop at the tier you want if it's not visible on the Atlas. So if it's not visible on the Atlas, the map can't drop. A, uh, a quick example of this is, uh, we're gonna, actually we'll, we'll wait until we get the watchstones properly. It'll be a better example. Um, but yeah, there's, there's more advanced stuff and some of the more advanced stuff will be covered more in depth in 202. I am, <clears throat> I'm actually trying not to overwhelm people in this episode because the map system is very, very complicated. Um, but uh, there's things we can do for like blocking or forcing maps. Um, for for league starts, the the number one tool you have for expanding your uh, atlas is Zana, and uh, you actually want to like because of this save up chance orbs during the campaign because we we actually don't get a large amount of chance orbs and most of them will be used here at Zana. So um, you get Zana the first time you enter a tier three map. The first time you enter a tier three map. And then um, she'll appear with a portal and there'll be a citadel and she'll appear. And you can see that she actually uh, sells a bunch of maps. And uh, we'll, we'll teach you in a few seconds how to reset that, etc. Um, and then whenever you do, you can then start randomly meeting Zana around uh, around the Atlas in different maps as a, as a master mission, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and she will offer you to do a map. Now, there's a couple of different tricks there. So obviously you can, she will uh, offer you maps that you don't necessarily have. So it can be a really, really good thing for completion. Maybe there's a map you've been struggling to get and Zana offers you that map. You can do that and get the completion. However, there's another really, really good trick as well. Sometimes people struggle on getting the end game lab trials for getting your Uber Ascendancy. And uh, it's important that when you are getting a Zana in maps, to look through the maps and look at the bonus at the bottom. It'll sometimes say like, contains an abyss, contains a unique item, contains a harvest. So uh, that's really, really good. Um, a, a decent thing, which is something I'm going to be more explaining in uh, episode 202, but you can vendor uh, three maps. Let's see. So if we look at um, Peninsula here, 
Peninsula is uh, here on the Atlas. And uh, Sulfur Vents and Volcano is like adjacent to it. If I sell three Peninsulas, you can see that I'm getting a, a Reef map, which is actually not connected. Uh, reef is all the way up here. So how does that work? And and this is, I, I do want to like briefly touch on it. But basically this Peninsula here, which is Tier 2, can go to any Tier 3 map in this region. Any Tier 3 map in this region. And um, the way that works is basically, it's a, it's a, you can do like different combinations. It's a little bit complicated, but you can play around with like, if I had six Peninsula maps, I could basically be able to sell for every different three, three, tier three map here in, uh, in the region. Uh, but that is also very complicated, not super important. And I'll try to cover that very in depth in the POE 202. Uh, let's see. Sorry. So, generally, running the maps you have are generally going to give you higher tier of map drops. Um, and especially early, it's pretty hard to like run out of maps, especially between like Zana and worst case scenario, you can end up buying maps. But uh, yeah, they are not guaranteed. So that's something like Path of Exile has that's very, very unique from any other game. So you could technically run out of the end game. And in the past, we used to be able to do so. Um, so you want to reach the outer regions because um, in the outer regions is when we start getting like more Atlas progression. So obviously we start here in the middle. Uh, you get the choice of one of these, like tier one maps at the start. And then once we, um, <clears throat> once we've started here, we can like branch out and get to the outer regions, which is where we'll start getting things like this red patch, which we're about to talk about. Um, and, uh, it could take you as much from like 30 to 50 white maps to get to all different, like the four regions. And you have some other tools to help you like horizon orbs, Zana, like I talked about, um, and uh, yeah, that can be really, really helpful. So every uh, every day, which is around it's around midnight UK time, it's either midnight or one AM. It changes depends on daylight savings. Um, but it's around that time, uh, and you get one Atlas mission of each type per day, and uh, it's actually based on the last map you did. So say that you've normally been clearing red maps, right? But the last map you did before logging out for the night was a white map, then you're going to get one of each white mission when you log on in the morning. So um, that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, also, this is actually um, uh, really, really good and why you want to try to get Zana early so that uh, you, you start getting um, you start getting Zana missions because if you don't have Zana unlocked, you actually won't get any missions. So let's say that it takes you two days to maps or something, you're technically missing out on a few Zana missions. Uh, and you get these missions as a, a reward whenever you kill a map boss. There's like a, a chance to get it, and at the end game, there are some things that you can uh, increase the chances. And then uh, there are a bunch of different missions. We have Einar, which adds beasts. We have Alva that adds incursions, uh, Delve that adds sulfite so you can uh, delve more, and then we have Jun that adds betrayal. And these are all things that add like different mechanics to the map you run and force that their way. The force that they're there. And you can only have one master mission. You There are other sources like Prophecy and Sextants that are like different sources of getting master missions, but you can't have like uh, Zana and Einhar in the same map. Right, so Alva adds Incursion, and that's like three temple rooms with extra loads of extra monsters, and these are really good for several things. Um, if you're searching for like divination cards for a particular item, uh, some maps will have like divinate like um, primordial blocks, for example, or actually residence is the best example. Will drop a divination card called the Dapper Prodigy, which is very uh, common to farm for because it gives you a six thing rare chest, which is item level hundred. This is really good to farm for, and it's even easier to find if we're running incursion on these maps. 
Um, so incursion is really, really good in several ways because there are loads of monsters that can drop maps, they can drop divination cards and just gear in general. And the temple, we can influence it in a certain way. Like you can change that there's a map room in there uh, and you can choose what level the incursion temple is in a way. So the final temple level is calculated by basically an average of all the tiers you've been running them in, um, plus up to 10 tiers, uh, but the max is still your highest. So for example, if you've been running a tier 70 uh, or a level 77 map, you can never get a 78 temple. Um, <coughs> so an example here of how do you could abuse it a little bit, um, you could run um, um, several like, low level maps. You, like you could run three tier three maps, which are level 70 and then one level nine. And then the entire temple is going to be level 9 or tier 9 or item level 76, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it does go like, it does average level, but plus 10. So it uh, you don't need to, like you wouldn't need every incursion you run to be in a tier 9 map for it to be tier 9 temple. Uh, and that temple can then drop up to tier 10 maps. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really good for like map sustain, which can be a, a struggle. Right. So again, like I was saying, Zana like lets you run a free map, and uh, it's important to um, look through all the missions and like it's actually like worth putting some thought into which one you're selecting. So we've already seen like a red patch on my atlas, but what are conquerors? Um, so conquerors are part of a, a fairly recent expansion, which is uh, um, something that ends up dropping something called watchstones that lets us. Uh, upgrade the tiers on our atlas and um, once we've done first we have to do a tier 3 map that lets us meet Zana but then once we do any map in the outer regions the red influence will appear and Baran is going to spawn and uh, Baran is the first of the conquerors that we meet and uh, let's say that we we go here we uh, we like we've just started the league and we've we've dropped the cemetery map we do it, and it'll be like this like, explosion. Looks really, really cool. Um, and loads of really dangerous monsters are going to appear. And then you finish the map. Cool. Now what? Now you have to do two more. So you could either do two more cemeteries or two, any, any two more maps in this region. Because at the start, uh, you can see here is like the completion meter at the end game. And you can see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that with the current state that my atlas is in right now, it would be nine maps for Baran to spawn. But at the start, for your first 20 conquerors, you only need to do three. Um, so they're very, very easy to spawn and start. And then once we've done those three first maps, uh, Baran spawns uh, and uh, Kirak is going to be like, you know, I always like to, I, I kind of wish it was the Metal Gear Solid, like, dun sound. Um, but Kirak is going to have an exclamation mark over his head. You talk to Kira, you talk to Zana, and she's going to be like, oh, Baran wants to fight you, basically. Fuck his shit up. Um, and uh, another another thing, actually, that is important to remember is whenever you do a Tier 3 map in a region, uh, after, like, you need to do this for Zana too, but uh, the other ones too, there is going to be a portal. It opens a little bit delayed, so it's sometimes easy to miss. Like maybe you're doing like, you know, dunes, you kill the boss, you portal out. Uh, but every time, the first time you do a tier three map in a region, uh, Zana's going to show up with a portal and give you a citadel, which is uh, something you're going to need in a second. Um, so that's the watchstone altars uh, or citadels, and they can hold uh, stones, which is a reward you get from slaying conquerors. And if I open my inventory here, I have uh, an inventory full of special watchstones that we're going to cover a little bit in a sec. But these are the ones you get from the, um, from the, like, Baran and all the Conquerors. So red is Baran, green is Hunter, uh, or Alhasmin, uh, the yellow one is Drox, or the Warlord, and the blue one is Veritania, or the Redeemer. Uh, and these will be used fairly interchangeably. Oh, and, uh, Baran is also the Crusader. Um, so you get these rewards, and you can put them in the Atlas to modify it. And... Uh, so here you can see that this is the stones from Glenite Cairns, but you can put this in any region. Uh, I just want to make sure I mention that because uh, 
I know some players have thought that the Glenite Cairn stones can only be used in Glenite Cairns, whereas this is not the case. They can be used anywhere. So that is actually fairly important to know. Um, and then, yeah, you do get like the, the counter is there, the influence, like it'll like show you how close you are to spawning him. Um, whenever you are opening a map as well, there will be uh, text here showing, especially early on, there will be like a pop-up text that will show you whether it's like, oh, it's too low to spawn influence uh, and, and it'll give you some guidance there. Uh, and, and for the first 20 times, you are 100% going to drop a stone uh, of the corresponding color and it's like very, very easy. Um, another thing that's good to note for this is if you hover over a region here, um, it'll say like obtained. So um, here it'll say conquer cannot spawn, right? Because, well, we have one here. You can only have one color at the same time. Uh, and uh, it'll tell you also number of watchstones required to spawn a conqueror is four. Uh, I actually don't have all of them obtained. You no longer need to get all of them in a way. That's because of the latest expansion with a boss called the Maven. But here you can see that in New Vestir, I have not obtained the Redeemer one. So I could, in New Vestir, put in four watchstones. And, uh, oh, let's see. And now uh, it would have a chance to spawn the Redeemer if I'm running high enough maps. So you do also have to run. The easiest way to explain this is, let's say that it needed... Let's say that it only needed two watchstones, right? So we're sort of like midway through progress. Now, uh, for Redeemer to spawn in this region, it would need to be running at least a desert tier 11 or at least a laboratory tier 10. Um, if I ran a laboratory at the tier 6, um, it wouldn't spawn anything. And we'll be uh, explaining how like these things like influence drop level and stuff here in a second. Um, so, whenever you do place a watchstone in the citadel, you can see that the everything is increasing. So, let's see. Let's put a red one in here, and we can put a green one and a red one here. It doesn't really matter. Like, they there's no difference. Uh, but, but let's see what changed with our atlas. Actually, let's make like a staircase, as I like calling it. So, we're going to have one region with one, one region with two, one with three. Uh, and, and one region with four. And then I'll explain a bit. So you can see that the atlas is changing, right? However, and a very, very important thing to know, whenever we're doing this to our atlas, none of the maps that you have in your map tab or your inventory or stuff, they are not going to change. Like a peninsula, with if I put in four watchstones here, a peninsula, is, this peninsula is still map tier two, no matter what. The These maps are like hard-coded or whatever. They're like, they're not changing. Um, so how do we, how does that work and how do we drop them? So let's, uh, let's look a little bit around Atlas and we can search. So now we only have these two as tier one maps, right? Because we've changed these four regions here on the left. If I search for, um, tier four maps, you can see that this is now tier four map, which used to be tier one. Uh, this arcade now is a tier eight map, which used to be a uh, tier one as well. Uh, and there's loads and loads of changes. Uh, so you can see that all, all the maps have been like increased. So we can like go and start searching up. And we can see that we are now covering loads of different tiers. And an important thing to know here is that like no matter what I'm searching for now, something is highlighted. Um, so uh, a, a, a quick example here. Um, actually, one sec. Um, Oh, and another thing, when we are putting these in, when we are, uh, more maps are going to appear. That's a very, very important thing to, um, to realize as well, that there are hidden maps, uh, on the region. So whenever you have all four stones in, all the maps are shown. So an important thing to know, like I said, like the, whenever you do put these in, nothing of like the existing maps you have, uh, changes. So how do we get them then? Well, um, now that we're like, uh, I, I showed that you see that something is getting highlighted each time I'm searching for 
currently tier four, uh, or like from tier one to sixteen, right? Something got highlighted for each tier. Uh, and that means now that if I'm doing right now, obviously I have like the entire atlas highlighted. So that's why for being able to drop things, it's important to complete as many maps as possible. If I search for tier six now, if I'm doing a shore, I could drop my geyser, I could drop silo, I could drop underground river, and I can drop any tier five, four, three, two, one map or lower in that. I can also drop tier 7 factory even though they're not connected because it's already like it's filled in and completed on my atlas right um and if i kill the boss here in shore i can drop an arcade and uh, obviously this is harder at the start because everything might not be filled in but what's important here is using this search feature if something doesn't show up it can't drop so what happens now if i take this out oh that's annoying Okay, uh, let's, this should fix it. There, this is a great example. If I search for tier eight now, you can see nothing shows up on the Atlas. That means that a tier eight map cannot drop. Obviously there are loads of tier eight maps that exist, but right now, if I can't search for it and nothing highlighted, and this is like, if you don't take away anything else from this lesson, this alone is a huge thing to take away. If you can't search for it, it can't drop. So right now, if uh, if the game goes, a tier 8 map is going to drop, it's going to go, well, oh, but you don't have a tier 8 map. What's it going to do? It's going to lower it. It'll never make it higher. Oh, but we do have a tier 7 map, and that will drop. If you didn't have a tier 7 map, it will go to tier 6 until it finds a tier as low that you have. And if you don't have a tier 1, it'll literally just not drop. It'll be gone. Um, let's see. So that is pretty important to know. Let's see. So, and, and because of this, I like to say that it's important to kind of have it in a staircase, as I like to call it, where you have, well, you could just do like one, two, three, four, um, like one region of each that completely works. But, um, the, the bottom line is just make sure that you have something of each tier. So in the start, you're probably only going to need to have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like up to tier eights. Like you obviously don't instantly need to drop a tier 16 because it's not like we can go from a tier eight map to tier 16 anyway. Uh, let's see. But yeah, keep it as a staircase. And you generally, you can work on one region at a time. You can work on all of them. That's not super important, but um, you do want to like hover over the regions and you could go like, okay, I've done Haywork Hamlet. Now I'm going to focus on turns end. The more uh, conquerors you've done, the more the minimum level to spawn them will be. So in the start, the first four, which you spawn in the four outer corners, um, is going to require no watchstones. And then... Uh, I think, is it maybe immediately after you've done the first four, you're going to need one watchstone in the inner region for your next four. And then it'll it'll very clearly guide you by hovering over here on the left. So keep that in mind. Right. Like I said, uh, a region with four watchstones in is going to display everything uh, with the possible highest possible tier. And with four in, it's tier 14 to 16 maps. Um, also, like just as a quality of life thing, remember you can like control click them out. So uh, you don't have to like drag them out whenever uh, you're doing that. Um, and there are magic and unique watchstones. There are unique ones dropped by Cyrus. Uh, I think I have a Cyrus Watchstone uh, terror. Do I have a terror? Yeah. So this is one of the Cyrus Watchstones. This is like super, super endgame. Uh, it's an endgame boss called Cyrus, which is at the end of the Conqueror arc. Um, he starts being able to spawn when you've killed 20 Conquerors, and he can drop things like this. Uh, and this is how you can get to the highest tier in the game, which is tier 19 maps, which is basically you would have um, three different ones of these. Uh, I can't remember their names. It's like Terror, the other ones, or whatever. 
But either way, like Terror and the two other ones, like you have plus one, and then put in a tier 16 map, and uh, then you get a tier 19. Um, let's see. And then we have the Maven ones, which is the uh, last expansion. And uh, these are Atlas locked. So it'll say on the, the Watchstone what region they're going in. Uh, so these can only be put in Hayward Hamlet. And uh, I don't think we're covering that too much in this region. Uh, in this lesson. So that's more complicated. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And... Um, very very important to remember like the the inner regions are slightly lower level so let's give an example of that so if i put one uh stone here and one stone here they're not going to be exactly the same tier you can see the lowest here is tier four maps uh and the highest is tier is it eight or seven i think it's seven uh whereas here they go all the way to tier nine so even though they both only have one stone uh the outer regions go slightly higher Uh, let's see. And honestly, at the end of the day, just remembering this, unlocked or connected and high enough monster level, these are like the core rules for dropping and, and remembering that you can search for tiers like this. Very, very important. So, I uh, slightly touched on Cyrus, the Awakener of Worlds, this uh, cozy fella in the top right. And uh, once you've killed 20 conquerors, uh, the Cyrus quest line will start. And um, until this point, they were like basically guaranteed to spawn. Uh, after you've done 20, after you've done 20, they uh, might not spawn. You could get really, really unlucky and you could actually be following all the rules and doing everything perfectly correct. But it could be like six or seven maps in one region until the next conqueror spawns. Um, so don't get too frustrated if it feels a lot harder after you've killed 20 conquerors. And um, once you once you are at the point where you're spawning Cyrus, this will appear and they will start filling in. So if we finish this the one now and kill the conqueror uh, here, Crusader would be like filled in here. And that would also mean that even though it says like maybe it says like unobtained on the red one here, I could still not spawn him and it would tell you that here in the region conquer cannot spawn like we currently have and that's because that after you've done uh the 20 conquerors um you have to spawn them um in, in cycles of four from now on like you can't do like three conquerors uh that are uh, like baran in a row and you could actually spawn them in any region as well um it would for example it would let you um once you're at this point, just keep farming uh, Haywark Hamlet, for example, with four watchstones in. You obviously will then not end up getting all your watchstones. Maybe you buy them from other players, but like these, um, obviously these can't be traded, but these, uh, the uh, unique ones and magic ones can. Um, but you, uh, at this point, it'll let you, and this is actually something that you could technically fuck up, but... Uh, um, once you're at the 20, uh, once you've killed 20, it will it will let you... How do I say this? Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to verbalize it. It will let you do conquerors you've already done. So, for example, you can see that I have obtained on all of these. It will still let you spawn now Crusader, and when I kill him, it'll let you spawn Hunter or Warlord or Redeemer, and it will let you do the entire cycle in a region that you've already done them. So if you are trying very, very hard to get all of your watchstones, make sure that you are doing maps in the region where you still need them is uh, the important thing. Because you could end up doing something I and I end up doing this almost every league where I accidentally kill at least one conqueror in a region where I've already killed them. And I'm like, ah, now I'm like one cycle behind in, in awakening level and it, it can be a little annoying but it's not a very big deal but I just want to make sure people know that can happen uh, because um, sometimes I will get people say like hey I killed a conqueror but he didn't drop a watchstone and th this is what happened then you've done the conqueror twice in that region
And then once you once you start Cyrus, something called awakening level comes into play. Uh, and awakening level goes plus one every time you have a set of four. And it doesn't need to be like, you could have two, 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 and that would still be an awakening level. Actually, there would be two awakening levels. Um, but for every fourth watchstone socketed in your atlas anywhere, awakening level is going to go plus one. This will give you multiple bonuses, uh, if you hover over here in the middle, you can see exactly what it does. Um, and it is also going to affect Cyrus a lot. So there's a very, very big bonus uh, difference where it's like Awakening level 8 or further level 9, which is more advanced. But 8 is uh, the max you can get to without in, um, doing anything like complicated. Uh, and at 8, you will spawn the highest level of Cyrus, which is, we, we just call it Awakener 8. But... Um, how does this work? So let's say that I had Cyrus ready to spawn, right? Sana would have a uh, open open thing here saying like spawn. I can't remember exactly, but it's very clear that you are opening Eye of Storms, I think. Um, but uh, before clicking that, you want to make sure that your Atlas level is at what level you want it to be. Because if you're a new player and you want to open Cyrus the Citadel, then uh, you might want to do it as low as Awakening level 0, right? Then you take every Watchstone out of your Atlas before spawning. Because once you're in, you can't decide like, oh, this is too hard for my character, I want to do it easier. Like, nothing can change an instance that is already open. And the same with if you're an advanced player and you want to make sure you're getting the max reward, you put in as many Watchstones as you have before going in. Um, and for Cyrus's drops in particular, um, you will get access to better and more drops at 8 Awakening level than on 0. And uh, I feel like there's very, very little difference between even like 7 and 0. So you might, especially in rewards, so you might as well just go for 0. Um, I think I think there is like maybe one level higher at 5, 6, and 7. But uh, 8 is the highest level and generally what you want to farm Cyrus at when you're able to. <clears throat> and uh, Cyrus, Cyrus is the best loot of any boss in the game where pretty much everything he drops is exciting and at least good. Uh, if you are playing on a league where you're able to trade with other players, then obviously some of the more common items are going to be cheap. But um, like at least at level 5 and 8 and etc, he drops Awakened Gems, he drops the unique Watchstones, so much good drops from Cyrus, so... Very, very good. Worth learning this fight. Um, and for unique items, he has like Crown of the Inward Eye, which is like one of the strongest helmets. Gloves are kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, really, really good items. Um, that is what we're going to cover for the basic one. We do have Mapping 202, which is going to go more in depth and more complicated coming up shortly here. Does any have any basic map questions or anything that they want re-clarifying? Can you only do 20 washstones and then buy the rest ones with magic ones? Yes, you can. Is it worth it? I mean, it's pretty easy to get your own washstones, but like even I even on SSF, I just did the Maven quest line so much that I have like I'm I'm more normal or the these washstones than the quest ones. So if you needed the nerf version of exploded chest next to it's better to do corner regions, no? I don't understand the question. How to farm one specific map? That's going to be covered in Mapping 202. A lot of the more advanced ones are going to be covered in Mapping 202. Worth selling for 3 to 1 when? Um, so 3 to 1 is super, super worth for exploring your atlas. It's a little bit complicated. Um, but let's take this... I think Dunes is a good example. So let's do a quick example because it is so important to learn. Uh, I was going to talk more about it in 202, I think, but... Uh, so let's look here, right? And let's make sure the region looks the same, just so it's easier to understand what's happening. Uh, but here, we have Dunes is level 4. Oh no, Dunes is a terrible example, because this can only sell... If I sell all of these, it uh, will only sell for a shrine. But there are other regions that are better. Let's see if I can find another one. I just don't have that many low maps. Underground C should be good. This should be a good example. 
So we have underground C here, right? And you can see that that underground C is tier two and we have multiple tier three maps. We have reef, we have glacier, we have overgrown ruin and courtyard and sulfur geode involved pyramid. And seeing as it clearly doesn't sell for the next connected one, however, it'll sell for any of those tier three maps. Um, I, I don't have like a great analogy for this, but just think of like every map has their own item ID. Like let's say this had item ID 1 million and three, this had 2 million and four. Um, and these three maps are always going to sell for courtyard. No matter like what way I shuffle these in, these are always going to sell for courtyard. But if I introduce a new element, this is now selling for sulfur vents. And these three maps are always going to sell for sulfur vents. Um, so basically what this means, and it might be a little complicated, but say we had like eight underground seas with just combining them, I can access every tier three map in this region because, you know, I, I'll have enough chances. And these three are Val Pyramid. These are also Val Pyramid. Um, these are Val Pyramid. Uh, this one's Sulfur Vents again. And you can like play around with them like this. And with enough maps, you'll be able to access every one tier, one tier above. Um, it might seem a little complicated, but the easiest thing here is if you have nine or something of a tier two map, tier three map, you're able to access everything from the next tier. And you can just play around with it. And I think it will click fairly easily once you play around with it yourself. Uh, but again, like the, the Dunes one, the reason why that only went to uh, Shrine is it's the only tier five in this region, right? So Dunes, like, Dunes can't go to like tier five in a different region. Uh, so that's a really, really good way of exploring. Once the Conqueror has been defeated, can they respawn again until he respawned and defeated the others and defeated Cyrus? Uh, nope. Can he explain natural tears? Sure. Uh, fuck. That is, okay, I'll be explaining that more in 202 as well. But, sure, there is something called natural tears, and the easiest way to find them is by actually the map tab. So everything that shows here at tier 3 is a natural tier, right? Because uh, an, a natural tier, another way of saying it, is also the first time it appears. So uh, an example of this is the first time Caldera appears is tier 14, right? Like, Caldera can at no point be a tier 3 map. It, <clears throat> there are two states that a Caldera appears in, a tier 14 or a tier 16. Um, whereas uh, a crater can be like tier 2, 8, 12, and 14. Or something. Um, and natural maps matter in a few different ways. Uh, horizon orbs. So, for example, um, I don't exactly know because it's filled in if Barrows is uh, a natural tier 14, but either way, we can horizon for a tier 14 caldera, right? So, if I keep doing this, it can become caldera, but the ones that, the ones that aren't naturally there, you can't horizon to. So this is very frustrating for new players because maybe they're like, hmm, I want, let's see, I'm really, really enjoying farming the Atlas and I want to farm a ah, atoll. I want an atoll, right? So you grab, uh, let's say you grab your burial chamber. You don't want burial chamber, right? And you're thinking like, hmm, I'm not getting an atoll. Wow, I'm being so unlucky. Oh my God, I've used 200. And that's actually because it can never appear because the toll isn't a natural tier 16. So if we have, I don't think I have a clean map tab. Oh, I do. So if you look here, these are the four natural tier 16s. We have Arachnid Nest, Burial Chamber, Necropolis, and Pit. So if you notice now uh, on tier 16s, Necropolis, Arachnid Nest, Pit, Arachnid Nest, Necropolis, Arachnid Nest, Burial Chamber. Those are all the four you can get with Horizons. Get it? Uh, and, and a lot of the more advanced things, uh, and obviously this is like, this might seem like a bad thing, but it is also a really, really good thing because it's, there's advantages to this. But either way, that's all the uh, examples we're going to do before moving over to mapping 202. Um, and uh, we'll have a lot more like advanced stuff there. I just, I'm trying a little bit to compartmentalize it so I don't overwhelm people because the mapping system is so, so complicated and I do want to try to like explain it as easy as possible. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Path of Excel University. If you enjoy it, obviously like subbing on Twitch and stuff like that is uh, one way to support, but we also have like cool new t-shirts for this semester. 
Like we're gonna do one new t-shirt per semester for those that do enjoy uh, the content and feel like it helps make their uh, Path of Excel experience better. So thank you again for all the support. If you're watching on YouTube, sub if you like the content, but the most important thing of all, try to die less than I do.